Hey, welcome. So today we're going to do another gun-related video. I just recently purchased a brand new AR. This time I got it from 22modsforall.com. I've seen their ads before, never gave it a lot of credit, and I couldn't find a lot of information online about them. I decided I'd go ahead and give it a chance. So I picked up both a lower from them, which is an Anderson, and I picked up one of their uppers. It's a 16-inch stainless steel 1 in 9 twist. So we're going to go ahead, open the box up, and I'll show you how it turned out. This is my brand new AR. I got an upper and a lower. And I picked these up from 22modsforall.com. This is their acclaimed 199 upper. Now, we've all heard that old adage, you get what you pay for. And I would agree, in most cases, that's probably true. But every so often, we've all had that moment where you've bought something that you actually get more value from than what you put into it financially. And I'm really hoping, fingers crossed, that that's the case with this. Now, the upper came through FedEx, and the lower came through, as you can see, USPS. And I'm not too sure why they decided to send them separately. That worries me a little bit. I've ordered a couple guns offline before, and I've never gotten them from two different carriers. Now, this did have to go to my FFL, and this came to my house, so I'm assuming that's why. But I ordered them at the exact same time. They shipped at the same time. I thought they'd ship in the same box. Hopefully, that's not going to be an issue. Now, this box here, of course, when I got to the FFL, we had to open it up and make sure everything was there. So, this is the actual lower. And under quick inspection at my FFL, no biggie. Everything looked right. Just threw it back in the box. Now, this is an Anderson lower. And then your really generic, cheap throw it in the garbage, recycle it if you could. They should put a recycling stamp back here because I don't think a whole lot of people actually run these. But stock, here's the lower. Now, we did a quick look at it when I was there. Everything seemed to function just fine. All the parts are in there, what appears to be at least nice and tight. Uh, the pins were really difficult to first remove, but after I kind of broke whatever seal they had, they're in and out nice and easy. No problems since then. The hammer, it does fire. And when you throw it on safe, it gets the job done too. I don't know if you're able to pick that up or not under the lights, but it looks like it was rolled in cat hair. That's the best way I can put it. There are massive amount of tooling marks all over this buffer tube. I guess it doesn't ultimately matter. I've just never seen it that way. It does seem to come with an upgraded uh, pistol grip. I don't know who this one's from because it doesn't have any markings that I can find on it. It does have one of those little silly stowaway latches back here to let you put in batteries or tissues or I don't know what you want in there. I know one guy's got a little mini cleaning kit in there. Most everybody else runs them dry, of course. Um, Standard trigger. This one is really gritty. You can hear it as well as feel it. I do kind of like the grip though. and This is better than your standard. I don't know if I will automatically throw this one away. I may actually run with this for a little bit. It's got a beaver tail built in, but back here, I mean, it's hard plastic. And you can get your thumbnail under there really easy. That's kind of rough. I don't really like that. Normally I replace these with hogs. I love those rubber grips. All right, let's get the stock on there. The normal six position stock. All right, feels tight. Well, maybe you take that back. It's not tight. I don't know if you can see that on film. I'll hold this flat here. Do you catch that in the camera? If you don't see it, I'll try to zoom in in the post. But that castle nut is definitely, oh my gosh. Finger tight. I did that all on my own. That's not good. Someone failed the quality inspection piece there. That's not a big deal. I got the tool, you can tighten it up. But geez, if you don't do that, it worries me about other things. This piece right here, if I remember, came in like at 159. 
All right, let's go ahead and open the upper and see what it looks like. So we got two rails. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So two 12 position rails. That was nice. Some Allen wrenches and obviously the little screws to attach them. I'll stick those over there. Just a packing slip, right? Yeah, my packing slip I got. So with the bolt carrier group and the charging handle, the upper was a total of $328. Throw in shipping and handling for another $14.95. And so for the grand total for this gun, as it sits, is $501.95. And I guess that definitely falls under the inexpensive category because we all know we can spend a lot more on an AR than that. Well, let's take a look at it. All right, so first look. Nothing seems to be loose. Pull that bolt out, a charging handle. Give it a shake. No rattling of any type. All of the little bolts look like they're nice and tight. That's just a quick inspection. I guess that helps support the idea that nothing's rattling. This doesn't seem to be twisting at all, which is better than that castle nut issue. It looks like I have a little bit of deformation. I'll see if I can't get that closer to the camera. You can see it right there, maybe. That oval is not quite perfect anymore. And on the back side, just a little at the top where it's dinged up. That must be where they put in whatever wrench they used to, of course, tighten it. But it's not bad. I'm not going to complain. It's nice that you even get some kind of upgraded brake. All right, so on this upper, as this just sits, I think this is a win, at least as far as appearances go. Eh, your standard charging handle, nothing fancy. Didn't expect it would be. The bolt, the bolt carrier, it's got a little bit of oil on it, which is nice. It's not overdone. The finish on this looks nice and clean as well. I don't see any tooling marks on this would make me worry. But then I don't know where they get this stuff from. I think we all know that very few, if any companies could produce an AR top to bottom. We take a peek in there. I don't see any little bits of metal. Everything looks really clean. There's no tooling marks or scratches. The finish is well done. Here's a better shot at how that grip actually overlaps. Again, that's hard plastic. Same on this side. All right. And I don't know if you can see it now, I'll try to show you that the weird marks all over the buffer tube. Hope you're getting that. Let's take a closer look at the actual key mod upper rail here. Everything looks clean. A couple little scratches there. There's that break. You can see just a little bit of deformation at the top. I'll spin it a little bit here as well on that left oval. Not a big deal. Everything looks clean here. I'll spin it around. Again, the finish is really nice. On the inside of the upper. Again, I don't see any little bits of metal. Everything looks nice and clean. Hopefully you're getting some of this. You can see just a little bit of the oil from the bolt. And it's nice that it's got a thin layer of oil. My first AR came caked in it. Not as bad as Cosmoline, but it sure was covered in oil. 
everything was soaking wet on the inside. Spin it around. Look in there. Looks good. Again, nice and clean. The rails match up nice. They seem to be right in line with each other. All right. Let's go ahead and see if we can't get this all put together and put the two pieces, marry them up and make sure everything seems to function. We'll do a quick check. Let's get these pins popped. Man, that silly castle nut. I can't believe that that wasn't checked. Oh, come on, get in there. There we go. And, and, and what? Pins out. Is it blocking it? Ooh, gouging up the bolt. What in the world? All right, so we do have a problem. I am stuck. Ugh. What's going on here? Let me get this popped. Huh. It looks like my tube is sticking out just a hair far enough. I can put the green pen on there just far enough that it won't allow it to close all the way. I'm gouging up my buffer there. You can see, I don't know if you can see that or not. I'm kind of giving that a scratch up. Let's, well, the good news is this castle nut is so loose that I can just go ahead and pull that off by hand. Okay, let's put this back together. And get that back in here. All right, let's try this again, shall we? All right, take two, I guess. We'll go ahead and drop that front in there. Pin locks. Oh, there we go. Now it's together. All right. That's a simple fix, another thing they could have checked. So, the lower, and there was two issues with that lower. You know, the castle nut again, wasn't tight, still just finger loose. I gotta get that tightened up. And then of course the tube itself was overturned by a single rotation, but it was enough to keep the gun from marrying up. All right, now that it's together, you know, I got a nice fit. I can't complain about that. Everything looks good. Just get that tightened up and we should be good to go. Again, thanks for watching. If you're interested in this at all, go ahead and leave a comment and I'll try to answer whatever I can. Again, 501 for this to be shipped. And that's not a bad deal. I'm happy with it so far. Now let's just see how it works. All right. Till next time, thanks.